Who are you? <laughs> My name is Rachel McIndoo. I am a sophomore at a local Christian college in town majoring in Christian education and getting my prerequisites for a degree in neurological psychology. What kind of person do you most admire in the world? When I think of the person that I most admire in the world, I think of my mother. She is selfless and interruptible, and she is not only selfless and interruptible when she's presented with an opportunity to be those things, but she pursues opportunities to be those things. She looks um, for scenarios where she could give or where she could allow her agenda to be interrupted in order to love other people well. And I think that that is, that is so similar to the character of Jesus and to some of the characteristics of Jesus that I love the most. So when I think of the person that I admire most or somebody that I want to be like, I think of my mom. What's the best piece of advice you've ever been given? Um, Jonathan David Helser, Hessler. <laughs> One of the two, Jonathan David Helser. Um, he preaches a sermon about worship and about serving the Lord well. Um, and he talks about our attitudes towards service projects. And um, he just asked the question, is God sponsoring your projects or are you sponsoring God's projects? And to me, that is just the lens I always want to screen ministry and service and relationships through. Am I doing this because this is a God project that I'm jumping into and, and signing up for? Or am I pasting God's name on this to make myself important? Um, and so I, I always want to be signing up for God's projects and sponsoring his dreams. Um, so a great piece of advice that I've been given is... You know, are you, are you making, are you using God to make yourself important or are you using yourself to make God important? Who or what has transformed you as a person? Who or what has transformed me as a person? Community has transformed me as a person. Growing up, I didn't have friends my age that were like-minded, that loved Jesus. Um, I always had friends that were significantly older than me or significantly younger than me. And when I moved um, to Conway and, and, got here for college, I was surrounded by a community who just avidly pursues the Lord in, in a very unabashed way and in a very uh, relentless way. And that inspired me so much because that's how I wanted to pursue the Lord. That's how I wanted to love Jesus. Um, the community here and the friends that I have are, are so consistently living out worship, um, whether that is singing and praising or whether that is just the way that they love on the people they pass on the street. Um, and I see them worshiping in corporate worship and I see them worshiping in, in a secret and private place. And I know that both of those forms of worship honor the Lord so much. And so it inspires me um, the way that this community loves the Lord in every avenue of life, whether it's seen or unseen, um, just because they love him and just because they want to be close to him. What is one moment that changed your life? Maybe the most monumental shift and trajectory of my life was my first international missions trip to Rwanda. Um, growing up, I told the Lord that I would do anything for him, but I would not be a missionary. And it is such the Lord's character to be like, the one thing you told me you wouldn't do for me, that's what we're going to do. <laughs> And so as the trip was presented, the Lord kept urging me to take the next step. Just apply. Just send out support letters. Just book the ticket. Just go to the team meetings. Um, and the next thing I knew, I was in Kigali, Rwanda. And Kigali is, is the heart of Rwanda. Um, we were there for a little under a month my first time. Um, and I thought I was going to teach English and music. And when I got there... Um, I realized the Lord had a completely different plan for me, a very redemptive plan for me. Um, prior to spending time in Rwanda, I thought that the details of my story, the details of my testimony that were uglier um, were just pointless. And I saw God as maybe a being who could protect but chose not to, or could redeem but chose not to. And when I got to Rwanda, Instead of teaching what I thought I was going to teach, I worked hands-on with girls who had been through exactly the same things I had been through, but because of um, counseling and therapy and because of pastors uh, back in the States, I was able to, to help them work through some of the trauma that they had been through, and I began to see the redemptive character of Christ working out just very, very personally in my life. Um, 
So it changed the trajectory of ministry for me. It changed the trajectory of my relationship with God. Um, I started just adoring how detail-oriented he was in renewing my story and redeeming my story. Um, so I finished out our, our month there. I went back the next year for about two months um, and since then have just been so encouraged by the Spirit to continue to use my testimony um, in a very honest way and in a very um, open way because I've seen how the Lord can use that to redeem people who, who have never talked about what they've been through. So that definitely changed the trajectory of my life. What inspires me? I think something that inspires me is the way that this community seeks new, fresh ways to worship the Lord um, through this podcast, through educating others about about the little that we know about worshiping the Father well, or through writing worship music, or through creating art or poetry. Um, the people in this city are so consistently trying to find new ways to tell God that they love him and trying to write new songs and trying to just create new ways that the Father hasn't quite heard yet, personal ways that the Father hasn't quite heard yet to tell him, we love you so much and we're so thankful for you. And, and I love that and that encourages me so much because he wants to hear how I see him and how you see him because he has a personal relationship with both of us. And so creating new ways to tell him how much we love him, I think just makes him smile so big. What worship for me, if, I, if I'm choosing it well, is praising him regardless. Um, so regardless of if I am in a church service or if I haven't um, spent time with him all day, choosing him regardless of my surroundings or my scenarios or the setting that I'm in, choosing to honor him regardless is what worship looks like for me, not just when it's convenient or I feel it. Um, those times, but especially the times where I have to choose it to recenter my heart posture and where I have to choose it to recenter my, my beliefs and remind myself of his character, um, worship for me is just honoring and praising regardless.